Let's talk about the foundation of mathematics. So what does it even mean and why? If you go back, I don't know, let's say 300 years to the days of uh, Gauss, people would make statements and they would prove them, do some computation, you know, and, and call it a day. Later on, when we get to the early 19th century, started uh, uh, problems started to kind of uh, creep up. There's a, a famous thing about um, what is the smallest number that's smaller than every positive quantity but greater than zero is, you know, and, and why can you even do that as the, the base of the Newtonian, you know, calculus. Then Cauchy came up with this idea of how to formalize this without these infinitesimals. And if you study the history of mathematics closely, then even his idea of what is a continuous function were actually not correct. He, what he actually thought of is what we would today refer to as uniformly continuous function. As mathematicians develop more and more and more, at some point somebody came and said, this is too much. We need to have a framework where we all agreed on the rules and we can work from there upwards. And this is what foundation of mathematics is. It's about finding this kind of framework and formalizing everything to make sure that if the framework is fine, everything's fine. Who or what or what organization has the authority to do that? Uh, Nobody. Who has the authority to define the English language? Well, in France, they do have an academy that does that. I know. There are some countries and languages they do have that, but English, for example, doesn't. Right. Mathematics, just as well. Right. Uh, if you really think about what is mathematics, it's a social activity done by mathematicians. So there's no official authority, but it's kind of a practical use. Nowadays, the most famous foundation of mathematics in a way, the de facto foundation of mathematics is set theory uh, through the axioms of Tomello, Frankel, and the axiom of choice, sometimes referred to as ZFC. I'm not going to go into exactly what it is or any of that. You are a set theorist. I am a set theorist. So it seems yes. like you would tell me that the, the best foundation of mathematics is in set theory. So I think it's a very good foundation, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, but it's not the only foundation. And also ZFC is not the only set theory that can be used as a foundation. Although by far it is the most successful one in terms of how well it caught on and how well we can use it. Other foundations can be type theory. This is very common for people working closer to computer science. Uh, there's all manner of type theories, homotopy type theory and simple type theory and all kinds of things in between. There's category theory, which uses you want to classify and say all structures that look like this and here's, this is a category and then you can say all structures look like that is a category and then you can compare them and understand how the categories themselves look like and what kind of information you can extract from that. These are all ways you can formalize all of mathematics into one big framework. And this is the important thing. The important thing is to have this framework. If you're a set theorist, right, and you're telling yeah. me about set theories have their own foundation of mathematics idea, mm -hmm. you have to make one that's also going to accommodate number theory and yes. algebra and exactly. all this sort of stuff. Yes. Right. So the idea is that everything can be interpreted into this, right? This is just like if you have a computer, maybe you have a Mac, maybe you have a PC, maybe you're using an Android phone. Those all different computers, in a very deep sense, they use different kind of architecture in the CPU, and they have different limitations and physical sizes and all of that. But they can all run YouTube for you to watch this video. How do they do that? The idea is that YouTube, you write all of this code in some high-level concept of a language, and that gets interpreted and interpreted down and interpreted down and eventually gets to just you know, physical, electrical sing you know, uh, signals, and that allows you to somehow build it all back. So the idea of foundation of mathematics, in a very deep sense, is to give you exactly this base layer. If you ask people, for example, who are more, you know, uh, geared toward computer science, that, you know, the, a lot of them are very angry at set theory as a foundation, and they will tell you it's wrong, and, and that, 
should be type theory because it's easier to do all kind of mechanical verifications and so on, um, which is an argument and arguably even a good argument, right? So they would want, I imagine, the foundation of mathematics not just to be the CPU, but also the operating system and also the browser or the app, right? But at the end of the day, the important thing is to just have something you can do. It would seem to me that the perfect foundation theory of mathematics wouldn't come from any of the camps. It would somehow sit above them all. Well, the important uh, thing to remember is that in set theory, you can understand type theory and interpret it in the sense that you can run it as sets, if you will. In type theory, you can interpret set theory and run it as a type. And you can understand both of these in the lens of category theory, and you can understand category theory from the lens of set theory. Um, they're all equally valid. I honestly think that the best way to choose one is whatever clarifies your argument best. A very famous mathematician told me when I was just starting my masters and I asked him something about one of the set theory axioms and he said uh, good foundation of mathematics should not interfere with the mathematics itself. This is why I find set theory to sometimes be a very good foundation because it doesn't interfere. You can just do your maths, you know that you can formalize it into ZFC or whatever and it's fine. Whereas if you want to formalize it into type theory, maybe, not always, but maybe you'd need to have some extra checks and to do some extra things or, you know, all kind of additional work. This is why um, some of the axioms of mathematics are incredibly successful because they allow you to kind of like put it in the back, ignore it. You know it's fine, you know it's working, right? Write your code in JavaScript. You don't care, it's just gonna run. And this is why we need foundation of mathematics. Why do we need a foundation of mathematics? Like, because everyone seems to be doing mathematics for a long time and it all seems to be working. It seems like we're trying to come up with some overarching rules and policy that maybe doesn't even need to be there. Well, we want to make sure that what we do is correct. And how do you do that? Well, you can just take someone's word for it and I'll grant you that, lots of smart people in mathematics, not me, but lots of very smart people. But then you see that smart people make mistakes too. One of the famous uh, recent examples, recent on a mathematical scale, right? So uh, Vladimir Vyvodsky, which is a name you may heard, he was a very famous mathematician. He won the Fields Medal uh, for some of his work in, uh, I think, differential geometry. and. Maybe a decade later, uh, somebody had found a mistake in one of his you know, key works and nobody could figure out because the proof was so airtight and also the counterexample was so airtight. So it wasn't clear what was going on. After a lot of work, Vyvodsky had found out the counterexample is correct. However, any and all uses of his work were within a kind of reduced version that the counterexample didn't uh, contradict and everything was fine. And after that he said, oh, the set theoretic foundation is terrible because we, it's very hard to check these kind of, you know, concepts that are very far and removed from set theory. And he started pushing for formalizing mathematics in uh, homotopy type theory and using a proof assistant which you can program your proof into and it will tell you whether or not the proof is correct. He worked on this very hard. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple of years ago. Um, but there's a very vibrant community of people who work on this. Uh, they tend to be more combative about foundation of mathematics than most set theorists. Um, but, you know, I guess they have the reasons. Um, but he, this is a very good example of there was a mistake and it took a very long time to clarify the problem. One of the uh, biggest examples of this kind of project was done by Russell and Whitehead in the uh, early 20th century in the uh, Principia Mathematica. 
where famously they managed to prove one plus one equals two in like page you know two hundred or something of somebody. There's a, a story I heard once, and I don't know how true it is, but somebody asked Russell, like, why do you need all of these complicated things to prove one plus one equals two? And he said, we need that so that when you go and prove other things that are less obvious, it is a lot easier to see why they're true because it's so not obvious anymore that you have rules to follow one step at a time. And so when we do mathematics, you want to think of writing something in a formal language and then deducing everything one step at a time. Now, as you progress, you have to deduce things five steps at a time or a hundred steps at a time. And this is where mistakes creep in. And if you have a lot of experience and you develop the intuition, everything could be fine. But my experience as a somewhat young-ish mathematician, I would like to think, uh, is that there are always mistakes. You write a proof and you say it's fine and then you go and you write your research paper and there's a small thing that you need to correct for. And sometimes the whole thing collapses. And this is exactly why we need Foundation of Mathematics. So what's the end game for Foundation of Mathematics? Is it to come up with a computer program that you can just put any proof into and it gives you an arrow across? So some people actually work towards that. Uh, there's Lean, developed by Microsoft, I think, which is very famous nowadays and is being pushed as something you know, very strong that helps these kind of things. There are other proof assistants uh, and they all equally the same in the sense that you program your proof into them and they tell you if it's okay or not. And they might be able to help you and identify gaps or problems. I can give you one example in my research field that happened recently. Um, there's a technique called forcing. Let's not go into what or you know, how it's being done, but one of the approaches of formalizing this is you say, take some finite fragment of ZFC. How fine, we don't know, we don't care, we know we can prove it exists, but we don't know what it is. Last year, a research group had finally found out what that finite fragment is by formalizing the proof around the technique of forcing and finding out exactly what it is. Is it important? Yes. Is it useful for me as a set theorist? Not so much, but it is very important that we can, in fact, know that. This is one of the things that we do today. Now, arguably, you'd want eventually to have some AI that helps you with it. Clearly not GPT and, and large language models. Those produce utter garbage at this point. Uh, it is hilarious sometimes to read that. You know, when you put like, hey, prove this to me, and you get this. Incredible nonsense. Things that not even freshman undergrads can, can write down. Amazing. But I'm sure some people hope that one day we can tell the AI, hey, uh, try and prove that for me. And it will go through the library of knowledge and be able to do that. Now, whether or not this will ultimately replace mathematicians, and I don't know. We'll have to find out. Uh, is it a good idea? I'm sure I would be very happy if I had an AI that said that I could tell, hey, prove this terrible and overly technical problem for me. I see in my research field a lot of the problems that are open are open because it's a technical quagmire. You, you put your hand into it and you just sink in. And it, at the end, somebody solves it after many years, and the solution is just to very painstakingly pull one thread at a time until you reveal the answer. Amazing use for AI. Don't get me wrong. Will it happen? We'll have to wait and see. But certainly this is one of the goals, is to have that. From a, a different perspective, the goal is just to know there's a uniform foundation that we just need to worry about that. And you can sleep well at night knowing that this foundation is solid and your math is fine. Aleph 1 is the size of how many types 
you can get uh, from well ordering of the natural numbers. But it's not all the different ways you can rearrange them. It's not all it's the... It's not. No. That is actually 2 to the 0. 